Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining, and we'll just take a, a quick overview of where we are with uh, Documentum in the cloud. We'll sort of review why Documentum customers specifically want to move to the cloud, uh, give a little bit of what's available now in the latest release, and delve into what's next on the roadmap and where we're looking to take Documentum in the next release and some of the bigger ideas that we want to address in 2020 and beyond. So I think before we dive in, into what Documentum actually supports in the cloud, we just want to run through what customers are telling us about why they want to move to the cloud, sort of give you a, an idea of why we're prioritizing things as we're doing right now. So we start on the, the left-hand side, so infrastructure refresh. We have lots of customers coming to us uh, because they are looking to redirect the costs of some of their very expensive on-premise infrastructure most notably their databases or storage. A lot of customers are, are locked in or feel like they're locked into paying obscene amounts of money just to run relational databases. Uh, plus also there's a big push inside of storage to move away from SAN and NAS and other types of hardware boxes that you have to buy just in case you're going to use the storage and move more towards object level storage where you can pay for what you use at pennies a uh, gigabyte versus a few dollars a gigabyte. And what customers have asked us for is to be able to support these new databases and uh, like Postgres and new storage like S3 from Amazon and, and others from other cloud vendors. And so that's you know, what, why, why we've added those in. A, a huge impact to the bottom line talking with Sydney, they, they think they're going to save around $3 million a year just by moving from their current storage devices all over the globe to a common S3 storage platform. And that sort of ties into pay for use. When you have to go and purchase all this infrastructure just in case you need to use it, whether that's because you want to prepare for successful solution that might expand larger, or if you have a need for every once in a while doing some batch updates or big publishing jobs where the volume and the load is so great that you need multiple machines to balance out across the board, customers end up paying for that power all the time. Whereas when they move to the cloud and they can move to virtual machines or they can move to containers, they only get charged for what virtual machines and containers that are actually active and on and available. So they, they like that as well. They can scale up and scale down and as they scale up and scale down for their needs, they also scale up and scale down their costs. Business continuity is another big one. So a lot of the cloud services themselves are just by nature. They have a lot of disaster recovery capabilities built right in that the customers themselves don't need to worry about managing. Uh, there's multiple replicas of the actual applications, and that goes down to the storage, the databases, the application servers, uh, all the connectivity as well. And just by using some of these services, uh, for example, when Sean's using the Azure's Postgres, they don't have to worry about uh, copying the database. They have multiple copies of the database ongoing being replicated in the back end. And uh, that can be within the data center, within different locations as well. So they're very eager to remove that issue from their own IT's hands, hand it off to the cloud partner. And in many cases, we have customers who have big challenge around disaster recovery and making sure that things are replicated versus just copied uh, will really help them out. So I think we can get to most of those things with document without having to worry about containers at all. But now we get into some really cool things that we've been able to uh, develop and really force the 30-year-old documentum into a new cloud technology. And that's around automated delivery. So a, a continuous delivery pipeline that really helps to manage the automated deployment, the updates, the patches, and even the rollback. And as we move forward, even in the scalability of, of the solution as well. And that comes from our ability to use containers and Kubernetes when Kubernetes is a service provided by all the large cloud platforms, and it makes the document applications very portable. And we can move our containers and the scripts to deploy them across those platforms with very minor tweaks and uh, you know very quick certifications on our part. From a documentum standpoint, we have a lot of global customers who have multiple deployments. They already have their own licenses. Uh, they like their ability to bring those licenses into our cloud environments. We don't charge the customers extra for 
deploying into their cloud of their choice. Uh, the scripts and containers come with the license that they already own. And so it makes it very easy for them to justify moving their applications to the cloud. And if they don't want to manage all that themselves, we have our specialists in the managed cloud services who have their experiences with the open text cloud and can use those in other clouds like the Google Cloud and even see some customers looking for managed cloud services in Azure and AWS going forward. So in general, the quality of the product, the quality of the solution goes up. It's very well maintained. The costs go down and the risks go down in the administration and and the ongoing running of the solution. So I'd just like to review the cloud completion that we have right now in 16.7. We introduced Docker containers back in 7.3, which is in 2016. We had a little bit of a pause during the acquisition, but then we got back into updating our containers, uh, introducing uh, Kubernetes and such, and it's really moved the needle for, for document in the cloud. So as far as containerization goes, almost all the document products are containerized. There's some things around Box and maybe a couple of the add-on solutions that are pending. We're still trying to see where Box fits versus uh, the cloud storage. And if you have globally accessible cloud storage, maybe branch office caching is not as important to some customers, but you're still remote, uh, branch office caching is there. The other thing too is if you're going to put branch office cache in a remote location, are you going to put it into a, a cloud container in a remote location or just deploy branch office caching as you do now and connect into the cloud? That's probably more likely. Beyond those, uh, we really want to make sure that the administration and developer tools are more cloud friendly. Orchestration, moving to Kubernetes, moving to the YAML scripts and the Helm charts that package all those up, really make the deployment of Documentum, if not 100% easier, it definitely makes it much more procedural. It allows the solutions teams to start bundling up the various different scripts into a runnable package that's just easier and easier to follow. The only thing, the only gaps I think we have around orchestration here is the auto scaling. And we've been working with some customers, some early adopters on what's actually required there. We're going to be doing a phased approach to scaling based on the capabilities of all the cloud platforms. We also need to understand a little bit more about when to scale, what those thresholds are, what those key point indicators are and what processes we actually have to monitor and what applications and procedures we have to look to to say that these are the priority items and this is when we add another instance or how we take an instance off because we have to ensure that that instance is not doing anything at the time. Um, cloud support, we have within our certification guides and release notes support for all the different cloud platforms as defined if they're using typically what we've historically certified as infrastructure. Uh, that means you can use VMs, customers create their own containers, but here we're really talking about what we have certified in-house, what our own references use, and currently with 16.7, we have Cloud Foundry, Google Cloud, and Azure available. They all run directly off of the scripts that we provide. Uh, AWS can run. It requires some custom tweaking and from the published references. That's what we're going to be working on next with priority. And then documentum and certifications across these platforms. There's always going to be proprietary services, databases, security monitoring, and all that. And as we get requests, we backlog and prioritize them in the system. And customer adoption, you know, it's a proof that customer adoption is easy. I think we have some very good scenarios on day one deployments. Some of the easier scenarios are moving smaller repositories into the cloud. Uh, we've, we've had that proven by early adopters. Uh, what we want to do is really get much broader support for different migration scenarios, get examples of existing applications and existing migrations that are being performed or thought of in the very certain customers and seeing how we can fit those together. And that's going to be an ongoing uh, process as well. Right now, definitely for customers who want to move into the cloud, professional services and partnerships with those cloud platforms are definitely required. But as we go forward, we'll have more and more best practices that are defined and documented, more tools that have been recommended for various different scenarios and use cases. Uh, here's a list of the containers that are 16.7. There's been a lot of releases this month. You know, we have everything in the platform. They're all the common components, documentum server, thumbnail server, docker over method server, an independent Java method server can be its own container now, which should dramatically help a lot of the load balancing across the board. Explore, REST, all the APIs for DFS are there. Document administrator, so that left side, all platform, all the common things there. 
uh, for many of the scenarios that get a little more complicated, I think we can fall back on what is proven and what works. Today, can connect into uh, document, I mean, Kubernetes, wherever it is located, whether that's on-premise or in the cloud. And we're seeing that for branch office cache. We also see that for some customers who get stuck on say, using SQL Server only or Oracle only, or they just don't want to make the jump to Postgres. They can stick with a content server in a VM and just add on containers for the clients and the services that they like. We have the process engine. The process engine doesn't have its own container, but it can be installed into the Documentum server um, as and when needed using uh, sidecars as well. And our open text directory services is taking over from the authentication schemes that have been traditionally part of the Documentum server. So going forward, we're going to be deprecating a lot of the uh, single sign-on mechanisms, the authentication plugins inside of Documentum server in favor of using OTTS. Like they have a whole team dedicated to security and single sign-on and authentication and authorization. So uh, we'll be working closer and closer to them going forward. Just wanted to say that we have Helm charts that help with the orchestration of Docker containers. We have a lot of things coming in 20.2. The cloud highlights here, definitely, you know, we want to continue on supporting customers with their adoption of the cloud. That takes two different forms. One is providing certifications of where they want to go and what they want to do when they get to the cloud. Also, to helping to reduce the cost so that it makes it easier for them to make plans, to get budget approvals and such to go to the cloud. We're helping them reduce the cost. In April 2020, we're going to be doing uh, more support for Amazon, flushing out all the Helm charts and such. We're going to be including more monitoring and scaling support as well. And that will help us, you know, the, all the cloud operations teams, whether it's ours or the partners or the customers, understand is Documentum up and running. And there's going to be some uh, capabilities that Kubernetes provides, some monitoring tools that we'll start looking at, and then we'll be open for other integrations in the future. We're getting to replica scaling as well. And that will help us scale up and scale down with Helm updates. Uh, that will be more of a sort of manual or scripted kickoff process. Uh, what we're doing is working with all the cloud platforms to try and find a generic approach to auto scaling. So once you have it deployed, document and we'll know what the thresholds are and then be able to tell Kubernetes when to upscale or downscale. Right now, that support is not generic enough for us to have one solution, but the replica scaling will work for everybody. And cost savings. So looking at cost savings for Worm, for S3, doing more benchmarks around the continuous delivery process. So you know, or you can tell customers that this upgrade or this deployment is going to take so long at their reference scale, or maybe it'll be a little bit tricky and there'll be some downtime for the customers. So we want to get more into communicating that type of information so that we can develop better practices for customers in different scenarios. Uh, what, if we have time, you know, there's going to reduce more, even more barriers more certifications, so blob storage, elastic file storage, to help reduce the costs on those cloud platforms for our customers who have large volumes of content. Uh, get into reducing the container size as well. Right now, if you go out and download them, you'll see they're multiple gigabytes large, and we really uh, want to make it a lot easier to more portable and, and less time consuming to get those containers and get them installed. Some farther, farther down the line goals, looking to reduce min costs again. The big one there is new cloud administration development tools to help with auto scaling, to help with uh, managing documentum from a cloud in a secure manner, the segregation of duties, and cloud encryption for making sure cryptography, keys, and any sort of passwords are secret. And then again, more and more certifications for different things as, as we can get them in. 